Hi guys, it's Tom from CoverJoint here, and uh, this video I'm going to show you an example of class inheritance in a Unity project. So this scene I have open at the moment is about a fight between a skeleton and a uh, girl with a sword, who's called Sword Girl, unsurprisingly. And what I, the way I've used inheritance is that the base class for both of these characters is, is basically controlling the finite state machine that determines their movement. So I'll quickly play the scene. So the skeleton is attacking at the moment and you have various options to defend or block or parry his attack and then you have the same uh, similar capabilities of attacking him doing quick attacks um, you can see he's defending at the moment um, but you have exactly the same options as him and it's sort of a back and forth between the two of you to determine who wins the battle so you can see there are quite a number of similarities between the two so I thought it was a good time to use something like an inheritance uh, structure where there will be a base class which I called character controller to control both characters or at least share some features between the two and save me some work in that respect so let's go over to Mono Develop and see exactly what I've done so the base class that both of them inherit from is called character controller so what inheritance means is that you take the features from one class and then you're allowed to add on top of it and you can modify some of those features from that class so by features I mean variables, uh, methods, properties, etc, etc. In C Sharp and what Unity called Unity Script um, you can only inherit from one class but you can inherit from multiple interfaces now interfaces are similar to classes but you can't implement anything in an, in in an interface so this means it's, it's just like setting up a contract. If you inherit from an interface, it means that you simply must implement the methods in the interface. So going back to my character controller, it inherits from mono behavior. So this means that any class that inherits from character controller doesn't actually have to be inherit from mono behavior itself because character controller will do it for you. And the other thing to note here is that this class is abstract. The abstract keyword means that this class cannot be instantiated itself. So there will be no instances in the game of a character controller. You must simply inherit from it. So the actual character controller itself is basically implementing a finite state machine, as some of you would have seen in my previous video. video. So I'll put a link up on the screen uh, now to that if you haven't seen it. But it's an implementation of a finite state machine that I quite like, actually. It's, it's very simple. Basically what happens is that when you enter or exit a state, a method is called that allows you to um, control the logic um, between moving from state to state. So it means that things don't have to be done in the update, or you, if you know, a, a very a trivial implementation of a finite state machine will will lead to problems because everything is usually done in an update, and it's quite tricky to know when uh, you've just entered or exited a state. But, so this is just a very standard finite state machine implementation. Um, using that structure which I showed in the other video um, different states here, attacking, defending, dodging, etc, etc um, let's get down to something more interesting we don't have an awake here, we have an init and then each of these classes which inherit from a um, uh, character controller calls init other good thing about using this structure as well is that the any sort of initialization which is a bit not, well not nasty but sort of more not not to do with game logic really it's just stuff that has to be done it's quite nice to be put into this a nit block here because it means that your actual classes sword girl controller and character uh, skeleton controller can actually just be concerned with game logic so it's quite nice to separate out those um those concerns so last thing that I'll show you in here is that we have some well last couple of things actually is that we have some helper functions here which are protected because we want we, we want them to effectively be private in that they can't be used by methods outside of uh, the character controller or the sword game controller but what protected does is it allows it to be accessed by inherited um, classes as well so anything in the family I think it is so we've got some helper methods and then we have these abstract methods here so these are methods that have to be implemented by both uh, any class that inherits from character controller but we don't need to implement it here because the implementations for sword girl controller and skeleton controller will be slightly different so there's no need to put any logic in here um, we can just sort of declare that these functions have to be used by these classes almost like you would in an interface and then implement them later so it's quite 
uh, it's quite useful to sort of declare these functions and say you have to do this. Uh, we know you're going to need functions which do this, um, but we don't need to implement them yet. So that's the abstract uh, keyword being used to do that. And then we have the virtual keyword, which is where we have a method in the base class, i.e. Uh, character controller, which we have implemented, but virtual means that if you want, you can override it, or you could even call the base class and then add some extra logic on top of it. I really like this structure, actually. It's worked out very nicely for me. Um, I'll quickly show you the Sword Girl controller, just to see, see how it works. So um, there are a few things that are special to Sword Girl which aren't shared by um, the character, the both of the characters, which you can just put in here. Like, for example, the opponent is a skeleton controller, whereas the opponent for the skeleton controller will be a Sword Girl controller. Um, also, we have a leveling up system for the Sword Girl, so the skeleton doesn't need that, so we put it in here. I'm sure you can see the uh, the idea. And then, as I said before, um, this is another advantage of the finite state machine implementation, in that um, I've I've got a method here, which is called attack, which otherwise I'd have to put in the update. But you can see that I don't have to put a switch state, you know, a kind of nasty looking switch statement in my update. I just have my attack method here, my defend method here. So that's quite useful to sort of separate out my code and keep things nice and neat. So here's one of the uh, abstract methods that I've implemented called move back, which is basically when I've done my attack and then I move back to my defending position. As you can see, I've used the override keyword here because it overrides the abstract method that I've declared in the base class. And uh, same here and here and here. So that's really the gist of the demo. Um, this will actually be something that I will be releasing hopefully very soon because I'm using this demo for my software Orbit as an example of how you can use the software, so my adaptive AI software Orbit, to change the behavior of the AI, this skeleton here, based upon the way that you're playing the game. So as you saw there, I defended in a particular way, I dodged all of his attacks. Now next time that the the skeleton comes to attack um, the sword girl again, it will bear that information in mind and change its own attacking behavior based on the fact that it knows that I've been dodging my uh, dodging attacks a lot. And the same thing when I attack, um, the way I attack him will be taken into consideration when he comes up with a defensive strategy. Now that's not fully implemented at the moment, but um, it certainly will be in the near future. And then I can get this demo out there and I'll, I'll make sure I do a video on that as well. So thank you to everyone who's subscribed recently. Uh, I've noticed the subscriptions have gone up quite considerably, which um, I'm extremely thankful for. So um, hopefully I'll be doing some more videos soon. But um, in the meantime, please leave some comments and uh, don't be afraid to like and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, thanks very much.